Hello, welcome to Making Photos. I'm Ian M. Butterfield. What's your Lightroom workflow like? In this video, I'm going to share with you what I think is the ultimate Lightroom workflow. It's my own workflow. It's my genuine workflow. I've talked a bit about workflow on this channel before, and what I've presented has been very much a simplified version of my own workflow. What I want to do in this video is step you through the 10 steps which make up my, uh, my Lightroom workflow. I've brought in from my home setup where I'm normally working the Behringer MIDI device, which allows me to control things within Lightroom. I've got my Stream Deck, which I have programmed with effectively shortcut keys uh, for Lightroom. And both of those will come into play as we go through this. So step zero. We're going from zero to nine, 10 steps in total. The first step is import. Normally images will be imported from a memory card. In this instance, I've already got them on the disk for purposes of the tutorial. So I've found the, uh, the folder with them in. They are all images from Las Palmas. I've all, I've already converted them to DNG. Um, I'll, I'll be honest, I have had these imported before. I've taken them out of Lightroom so I can show you the import process. So normally I would bring them in as copy as DNG. In this case, I'm just going to add them in situ, but it's the same process, um, whatever. Now, uh, building previews. What I would normally do is I would build one-to-one -one previews. So I'm going to say that. I always select, do not import selected duplicates. We've got two sets of settings that we can apply here. The develop settings, I'm going to use my uh, defaults with reset. And my defaults with reset, clear any processing that's on there and add in just a little bit of clarity, a little bit uh, of uh, vibrance, because I do that with all of my images. I also automatically apply lens corrections to all my images. And I've done it as a preset because that will speed things up. I don't have to do this every time I uh, choose to edit uh, an image. Then we've got metadata. And I've got a number of different ones here. I am going to select copyright default. And that will put in my copyright information in there, but it will also apply nine keywords. And I'll talk about those keywords as we go through, but those are the things which will control my workflow. So once I've done that, I would then select import. And Lightroom goes away and starts pulling them in, as you can see up here. So let's talk about those nine keywords. They control my workflow. And if I open up the keyword list here under a heading of work list, I've prefixed it with a dollar so it's at the top of the list. You can see the nine keywords, geotagging, basic metadata, keywording, selection, development rate, library submission, that's for stock photography, additional metadata also for stock photography, output and proofreading also for stock photography. So those are the keywords and the, the, uh, the nine stages of processing my images. Each of those stages are also represented by some smart collections that I have created. You can see each of them corresponds to the keywords. So I've got a, G, a set of geotagging ones, basic metadata, keywording, selection, etc., etc. Now, the thing about all of those is they only work on images which are in this particular collection called at do now. It's currently set as my default collection. I can select all of these images that we've just imported and I can hit the B key 
and that will assign them to at do now. So that group of 184 images are what I'm going to work on. Now, it may be that some images have already had things done to them. And that's the beauty of this workflow. Uh, you, it remembers where you are up to and prompts me to carry on at the next stage. So turning my attention to the different stages of the workflow. So let's look at step one, geotagging. You can see here, I have got a series of smart collections. The top one shows me all the images which have got the keyword uh, one geotagging assigned. The next one indicates all the images with the geotagging keyword assigned that don't have any GPS data. The done smart collection indicates uh, all the images which still have the geotagging keyword assigned, but have actually got GPS metadata assigned. So I'm going to select up here and look at all the ones that require geotagging to be done. I can go to the map. So I'm going to load the track log I created when I was in Las Palmas, which is through my GPS watch. So load track log. And it's in the same folder as the images. Select that and open. Now here's a little bit of a bug. It only shows me one section of the, uh, of the track log. I'm going to highlight all the images. I can then simply say auto tag 89 selected images. It goes away and if I zoom out, you can see where all those images are on the map. And I can have a look, uh, for example, at these two images. And they were right on the seafront where there was uh, a sand sculpture. And if you actually look at this, this is, this is really incredible um, because it's positioned them on the seafront. And you can see they must always do sand sculptures in the same place, because as you can see, there is one directly in front of where those photos were taken. So I've confirmed that all those are correct. So at this point, I can now look over at the, um, the work lists over here, and it's taken them from to be geotagged to done. Let me go over to uh, the, the um, library module. All of those have been geotagged. So I would do control A and I could then just simply remove the geotagging um, keyword, which indicates that that step has been done in my workflow. So there we are. Nothing in the geotagging section. So close that up and let's move to stage two, basic metadata. Now, what do I mean by basic metadata? I mean the essential things that we have to apply to an image. Um, in my case, because I do stock photography, I want to record where images were taken. So that's all my location information. It's also um, things like a title or a caption that needs applying. So let's have a look at these smart collections. Uh, the top one uh, tells me all the images which still have, haven't have had the basic metadata stage of my workflow done to it, which is all the uh, Las Palmas. And we can see here a set of images of Naomi, the clown in uh, uh, the studio shoot. So then the individual ones tell me different stages which need doing. So no country. Let's have a look at that. Well, it's only the Las Palmas ones. So I know I can go control A on there and I can set my country information. Now I always set um, a country ISO code. So I can come here and that is ES for Spain. Apply to selected. Country would be Spain. So put that in. Apply to selected. And notice now it's moved from there, it's moved down to the next stage, no state. So what's the state of where I'm at? Well, um, it's Las Palmas, uh, which is on Gran Canaria. 
highlight all of those. I know they're all the same place. And I can type in Gran Canaria. And they've moved off no state to no city. Control A, city is Las Palmas. Now, location within there, that's getting a little bit harder. So can I remember where every photo uh, was made within uh, within that? And I'm not quite sure I can. So I can go over to the map module and get some more information from there. So I go over to the map module and I can see that down here, Playa de las Canteras, I think these 10 Probably a few of the others will count as part of that. Uh, so let's have a, a zoom in. And yep, I would say all of these will count. So click on and shift and control click through to select all those. And I can select and put in the sub location here. And I am going to say Playa Las. Canteras. It's all that sort of area. Um, that's good enough for, for what I need. Now you notice they've disappeared because I'm looking at this smart collection which says just show me the ones with no location, which is great while I'm on the map module because I can now scout around and see right okay which others can I get rid of this way and I'm looking for for names of locations. So I think probably I'll go with the Mirador here, select those, and I can put those in. Mirador Confital. Those have been applied. And the rest, all the location metadata has been applied. But how many of them have got captions? Well, not a lot. So go over to the grid and this particular group will tell me if um, there is neither a title nor a caption. The next one will say there's no title and then title without caption or caption without title. And I can view them in different ways. Well, I'm going to go with no title or um, if the title or caption is missing. And these are, I can select all of these at the studio because they're all clown shots of model Naomi. So I'm going to give those a title of clown Naomi at Ian's studio. And then the ones further down get a little bit harder to do. So what are we looking at here? I'm actually just going to call those uh, the same as the sublocation. I will just call it uh, Playa de las Canteras. And right now, I want a slightly different title for these. This is Benny, title Playa de las Canteras, and add into it Benny, a teddy bear at Playa de las Canteras. So that's got a title. And I can go through and we'll go through the rest of the images. So I've put in the title on all the uh, images. This is where it comes in really handy having the smart collections because somewhere along the line I managed to miss one. But the fact that it shows up here, it tells me, ah, you've missed it. So I need to do something about that. So I will call this one footpath on Peninsula de las Letter. So all the titles are now in there and I've got this whole list of titles without captions. And what's the difference between a title and a caption? Well, uh, the, the caption is technically the longer name for, for it. Sometimes they're the same. So for example, here with the studio ones, uh, it might as well be the same caption um, throughout. Now I could get inventive with some of these. So I could say that actually I want the title here 
of uh, Clown Naomi juggling at the end studio. Or I could add spinning plates at the end studio. So like that. Then the next set she's doing Diablo at in studio. And then we've got some of her with custard pie. I want to copy that title into the uh, uh, into the caption. But oh, now I've gone and made them all different, or some of them different. So I want to be able to do that quickly. I want to be able to do it accurately. Well, this is where my stream deck uh, comes in because I've written a bit of code for Lightroom, um, a plugin, and attached it to one of the buttons on here. Hopefully you can see the stream deck here. And I've got various buttons programmed in. So for example, preferences. These purple buttons are corresponding to the different stages of my work. So I've got ones for, let me show you the location metadata ones. And this will allow me to apply some of my more common um, uh, bits of metadata, such as UK, Greater Manchester, Stockport, etc. Uh, but where I'm at is title and captions. And if I select all the Naomi ones, I can say I've got an option title to caption here. So if I select that, watch what happens. It goes through and takes them off my title without caption their list, puts them onto done. So this should just be the Naomi ones. And now if I just pull some of these up, so for example, this one, you can see it's copied whatever was in the title into the caption. So the juggling ones, it's pulled in that. So each of them is a very quick way for me to move information from title to caption. So, okay, if they're all the same, why do I want them? Well, the answer comes with the other, which here in, uh, in Las Palmas, because here I might want the full information of let's take for example the fisherman's statue what i want in the caption is a full set of information so it would read uh, fisherman's statue playa de las canteras las palmas gran canaria spain is what i want in there but if i look at this one playa de las canteras I don't want it to put the sublocation, the city and the state in there because otherwise it will read Playa de las Canteras, Playa de las Canteras, Las Palmas. And so that doesn't make sense. So I've created another bit of code which will look at this and check that if this entry appears somewhere in the title, it doesn't add it on into the, uh, into the caption. So let me select all of these and I do auto caption. I'll show you what happens. So again, they've all been moved over into done. So here now, Playa de las Canteras, and it's just Playa de las Canteras, Las Palmas, Gran Canaria, Spain. But the fisherman's statue, it's got fisherman's statue, Playa de las Canteras in there. And the hand, hands detail moving down to some of the others. Again, it's got the full, full list. Uh, so Benny here, the full, th the full thing has, it's been added in. Uh, whereas the one which says, uh, view from the mirror door, confidential, it doesn't put, it's seen that mirror uh, confidential is already in the title, therefore it's not put the sublocation on the end of it. So you can see how that now reads, which is a lot more, um, a lot more appropriate for uh, a full caption for images. And it's that full caption that I would use with stock photography. So at this point, everything is now done. And again, I can use my uh, keypad here. I can say select all, and I can just hit basic metadata done and it will just remove that keyword for me.
So, off they've come, off that particular part of the work list, on to keywording. Sorry for interrupting myself, but I came to the conclusion while I was editing the, uh, the video that really this is going to be too long for a single video. So I'm going to split the video at this point and when it's ready, part two of the video you will find here on the screen. Meanwhile, there's a playlist all about um, Lightroom down below. So uh, thanks for watching and until you see me again in part two, keep making great photos. Bye for now.